Hi there, what's up? Welcome to part three of my eight loop programmable DIY pedal board switcher. Uh, I've had a busy week this week. I haven't been able to do much on it, but last week I did get a little bit done. I haven't advanced the programming anymore. Uh, it's pretty much where it needs to be. I've just got to make a few alterations to make it do what I want to do but pretty much all the problems were solved and I showed you that in the last video. So let's check it out and just see where we're up to with the uh, device itself. So here's the front panel and I've got the eight switches installed, the eight momentary foot switches. We've got eight LEDs to tell us which banks are turned on when we made a selection. I've got three LEDs here to switch between three different banks so that each button can do something different, uh, you know, on each bank. Also, uh, I figured that if I want more options, I can switch to using binary to indicate which bank I'm on so I can get more banks than three. Also, I've kept these pretty tight so I can, if I, if I wish to, install a seven segment display there and then I get up to nine different options and it's easy to read but that'll require a little additional programming. If we go over to the back panel or the back of the panel I should say you can see the back of the switches I will uh, make one leg on each of these switches common and common them all up and they'll go to ground and then all of the the hot or active sides of the switches or the other terminals will go to each pin on the Arduino board to uh, actuate the programming more or less. Uh, the three LEDs here I've got the uh, printed circuit board or strip board or ferro board or whatever you want to call it in here and I can run uh, the resistors for those across. I've also ran them so one wire is common or one strip is common for the negatives and I'll do much the same for these across here down the track when I get to that. Okay so let's check out the main like box, the, the enclosure itself. At the moment I'm just trialing or testing a few things I have the relays mounted, I've got all the holes drilled at the front, hole drilled at the side for the output, hole drilled there for the input, I've got a hole marked I don't know where they went, there for, uh, for the USB input so I can program it and I've still got to put a spot in for a power jack. Uh, so here I'm just getting an idea of where or how everything's going to fit together and I'll probably have to take these boards back out to mount the rest of the, the input and output jacks for each loop. So here's what I've done with the input and output jacks. I've actually soldered, soldered them together and then one wire will be input, one will be output and in this configuration when there's nothing plugged into these it actually is a through. So if you have nothing plugged in and it happens to be programmed in, it will still work. It'll send send the signal straight through as if uh, there was a cable plugged in here. And that's the idea of that. These line up so they'll go, go through like so. So that shouldn't be too bad. I've got the holes drilled for the Arduino board. And I've countersunk all the screws in there. I think I'll show you a little bit more of that later. But I've made some progress on it and I'm hoping to do a lot more over the next two weeks. And I will give you another update and let you know where I'm up to. I'm really excited to get this finished and actually get to the stage where I can program it because then I can test everything out and you know the sky is the limit like as far as what I'll be able to do like one button press will completely change the configuration of what pedals I have connected and 
on the fly, like when you're coming up to a solo or something, uh, when you're playing in a band situation at a live gig, uh, that's really handy. So you don't have to dance around, turning delays on and off, turning boosts on and off, uh, going from, say, clean to dirty as well, like, or a combination of any of those things. You can all do it with one, one button press. So in my next video, due to popular demand, uh, I've had numerous requests for this over the years. And this was actually one of my very first videos on this channel. Uh, I'm going to do up a schematic of this guy here, which some may recognize. And, you know, I've had numerous requests for it. So I figured I may as well draw it up so that somebody else can get a little bit of inspiration from it and uh, it can be shared around. There's nothing really significant about this circuit. It's not anything magical. It's pretty much a JCM 800 front end uh, just adopted to have one hot input and basically configured so that you can run it into you know whatever you like into a pedal or into an amplifier but i'll be drawing this up explaining it putting some voltages up there and taking actually taking measurements off this as i go so that uh, you can get as near to it as possible if that's what you want to do uh, i'll explain the power supply setup the high voltage which is here and the low voltage which is here and yeah, I'll just put it out there so somebody else can get some benefit from it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up if you like. You know what to do. Have a great day. I'll catch you later. So here I am in my workshop, just piloting the holes for the jacks to go in. So with the smaller drill bit, uh, the torque when the drill actually grabs isn't as much and um, what I can do is just hold it by hand but with uh, a bigger drill, don't like holding it by hand as much. Here I've ground off some of the internal protrusions that were getting in the way. So I've kind of worked out uh, based on where these switches are going to go and everything else internally where I can actually put the input and output jack. Um, I haven't got the switches yet. I'm still waiting on them to turn up, which is a major hold up for this project once I get to that point. Uh, but what I've worked out, if I put it near the center, just offset towards the, the front slightly, or possibly even the back slightly, might go the back side actually, I can, uh, if I keep it up fairly high, I can miss everything, and that'll that'll work fine. So uh, I'll mark that and uh, proceed to uh, make that happen.
So basically, I've marked them both. Now you just uh, center punch it. So that your drill bit centers itself exactly where it needs to be. I'm just using a claw hammer because that's all I've got at the moment. Okay, so I went through and I piloted those and drilled them. <laughs> 